The first tool I want to show you is the Configuration Manager. This tool replaces the old SQL Server 2005 Services Manager, and you'll see that as we select these, you can see every SQL Server service that's been installed on the server. They can be started and stopped. There's a few properties here that can be controlled. This is also useful for network configuration for both the server and for the client. So this is Configuration Manager. The next tool I want to show you is the SQL Server Surface Area Configuration Tool. Now that's a strange name, Surface Area Configuration Tool. The reason it's called this is it allows you to control how much surface area is exposed to potential hacker attack. So the idea is that SQL Server 2005 is shipped with as many features and services turned off as possible to minimize the surface area or the exposed area to hacker attack. The surface area configuration is a central place where things, different features, different connections can be turned on, which opens them up to attack, but you have to turn them on to get them done. It's broken up into two different areas. The first is services and connections. So as you see here, here's a service. Here's remote connections. By default, only local connections are available. On this machine, it's already configured to allow remote connections. Turning on the browser. This is simply another instance of SQL Server, again with the service and with the connections. So this allows you to, to enable connections. There are more options in the features because SQL Server is installed initially with all these different features turned off. For example, remote queries, the CLR, database mail, service broker, the web assistant, XP command shell. By default, all of these different features are turned off. And before you can use them, before they're enabled for possible attack, you need to go from here to the surface area configuration tool and enable them. So that's what this tool is for. Books Online is a often referenced tool. Let's just jump over to it. Let me open this up. Because Books Online is very different than it was in SQL Server 2000, let me point out just a couple of options. The index is still similar as far as being able to type in what we want to look for, search for it in the index. However, the search capability is vastly improved. So let me come down here and close the taskbar to give us some more room, and let's try out a search. Let's do snapshot isolation, my favorite new feature. Online settings. Let's go ahead and use local help as a primary source. But you'll notice it'll also can try to search online as well. So we got back 72 hits for snapshot isolation from the local source. MSD Online gave us 100 hits. Code Zone, which are articles written by other people in the community. And it even searches questions in the news groups as well. So this is very, very cool as far as being able to search in multiple different locations to find what you're searching for. So I'm a big fan of the new books online. Ask a question lets you jump right to asking a question in a news group. There's also the ability to have help favorites and save favorite pages to the help favorites. There's context, quite a few new features here, and it's worth exploring and becoming familiar with books online. Let me close this and jump to the next tool. The lesson on indexes coming up later in this training will explain how to design indexes in a logical manner that makes the most sense. SQL Server Profiler, however, is a fantastic tool. And again, when we get to talking about indexes, we will come through here and I'll show you some pretty cool things about this. But while we're giving you an overview of the tools, Profiler allows us to see events inside of SQL Server and also watch the traffic of what is being sent to SQL Server. So for example, we're starting a new trace and we'll call this trace total training one. Keep the standard template, that's fine. We'll talk more about saving to file and, and saving a table later on, but I want to show you the events selection. If we say show all events, it opens all this up, and you can see that there are dozens and dozens of different types of events. A favorite of mine would be 
tSQL statement completed, which will then give us the text of the SQL, how much CP was used, reads, writes, and a key is a duration for the SQL. So you can see there's a number of different events here that you can get to. And then when this is running, you'll actually see every one of the events being captured. We'll use SQL Server Profiler in depth in the lesson on indexing. Which brings us to SQL Server Management Studio. By far the most popular tool, very powerful. There's actually a lesson coming up, lesson number three, where I'm going to spend quite a bit of time showing you some tips and tricks and how to move around and navigate in this Visual Studio-esque type environment called Management Studio. The last tool I want to show you is actually in the control panel in a part of Windows. It's Performance Monitor. When I open this up, and let me close this out of the way. We've all seen Performance Monitor before, or System Monitor, which is one of the tools within Performance Monitor. And at this point, we're just watching uh, pages per second, average disk queue length, percentage of processor. However, when SQL Server is installed, it also adds a number of counters that are SQL Server specific. Let me open this up and show you. Here's a bunch of SQL Server specific ones. For example, here's databases, and then we can look at active transaction count, transactions per second, which is always a fun one to watch. So Performance Monitor, or Sysmon, allows you to see counter type statistics overall for the server. It serves a different purpose than Profiler we saw a few moments ago, which gives us a granular, very tight, specific event, whereas Performance Monitor gives us an overall view. There's also some cool stuff we can do, and I'll show you later, as far as counter logs, and tying all this back together and integrating Profiler with Performance Monitor, or what's commonly called Perfmon.